Good Monday morning. Welcome to Court TV Live. Glad to start off another week with you here. And this is a big week. The trial for the three men accused of killing Ahmad Arbery beginning any moment from now. First up, we are expecting a motion hearing before the start of jury selection. We'll take you into court as soon as that begins. Defendants Greg and Travis McMichael and William Roddy Bryan are facing nine charges for Aubrey's shooting death in February of 2020. Court officials in Glynn County mailed jury notifications to 1,000 potential jurors. Of those, 600 people will be reporting this morning to the Glynn County Courthouse Annex Building in Brunswick, Georgia. The remaining 400 are on standby to show up next Monday if there are not enough qualified jurors in that first batch. Let's head out to Brunswick, Georgia. And that is where we find Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter. Good morning to you, Chanley. Let's uh, start off with this motion hearing that we're expecting to start at any moment. What do they have to tackle? Well, Ted, it'll be a big motions here and really hammering out all of the final rules of the road for not only the big trial about to happen, what evidence is in and out, but also the jury selection process we're expecting to begin today. Now, this motion hearing is going to start at any moment right now, but there are several outstanding matters, motions in limine from both the prosecution and the defense that the judge may take up this morning, including the prosecution wanting to keep out the THC levels in Ahmad Arbery system at the time of the incident. Also, the fact that Ahmad Arbery was on probation at the time that this happened. The defense is wanting to keep out what is on Travis McMichael's vanity plate on his bumper, the front bumper of his truck that we've seen in the viral video. It had the Confederate flag emblem on it at the time. They don't want that before the jury and the implications that may involve in the case. So several of those matters may be taken up. But what is most important is what is going to happen in jury selection. The attorneys have some matters to hammer out as far as the process that will undergo over the next several days, including media access, not only to the courthouse behind me here in Glynn County, but also whether or not those prospective jurors audio can be streamed publicly. The defense wants to keep that out. There's an individual part of this process, Ted, that they want to keep the media out because they want these prospective jurors to be raw and honest with them about any sort of bias or what they may know or not know about this case or their thoughts and feelings about it. And they feel that having the media record some of that process may inhibit jurors from doing so. So all of those matters going to be taken up this morning. Some big decisions still to be made. A lot of information already being gleaned by this potential jury pool in the form of a questionnaire, which we see a lot uh, on trials that we cover here on Court TV. But this one, um, it's a high profile trial. So an extensive questionnaire. What, give us a sense of what was on that list of questions for the potential jurors. You know, looking at this questionnaire, it's only about three pages, which surprised me given the magnitude of this case. As you said, about a thousand people received this a questionnaire, three page questionnaire. That's about one in 85 residents here in Glen County, Georgia, received this. They filled it out. I want to go through a couple of the questions that are on this questionnaire. And of course, it's asking what these uh, jurors may or may not know about the case. Question number one is how how much do you think you know about the case from any source? They can rate it from one to ten. And there's a part on there you can actually fill out several blank uh, lines. They can write out what they may or may not know about the case. It also asks about one of the key pieces of evidence for the prosecution and probably the defense in this case, and that is that viral video. Question 13 says, have you seen video of the shooting in Satilla Shores? Yes or no. If yes, how many times? Where did you see the video? Question 14, do you have any friends or family members that live in the Satilla Shores neighborhood? Question 15, are you friends with or related to any of the defendants or their family. So trying to get and engage what they know in this video. Again, this is going to be a key, huge piece. They want to know if they've seen this video and how many times they've seen this video because we expect not only the prosecution to use this, but also the defense to use it as they claim it may even help their uh, case in self-defense, Ted. You, you mentioned the process a little bit in this jury selection. You, you have 1,000 people, 600 showing up uh, this week today. Um, I, I, you kind of mentioned there's a little voir dire, uh, individual, and then well, how does it work? 
it's going to take several days. We're expecting this process to work right now. Uh, again, you said about 1,000 received this questionnaire, fielded out, but they're going to have 600 or so show up at a place off, uh, not at the courthouse, but a place in Annex where they're going to show up and then come over to this courthouse later this afternoon in different groups of people. There is a process, there's a courthouse, uh, I'm sorry, a courtroom where they will do more of the screening of hardship and uh, publicity, more of the group questioning of the process. And then the courtroom will be for the individual, where those who make it through process number two, I guess, or phase two, will go to this third room where they'll have individual questioning by the attorneys. So it's going to take several days. In fact, we spoke to the defense team for Greg McMichael on Friday about what they think this process will look like. Let's listen. It's... Uh not a large county, Glynn County, and they've summoned about a thousand jurors. I don't know how many of them will actually show up. You, you have a good percentage who don't show for legitimate reasons and some not legitimate. But um, yes, jury selection probably will last more than a week. I'm thinking two weeks, maybe even more than that. Um, it just takes a long time. You're going to be doing individual sequestered voir dire. And each juror, um, in my recent death penalty case, we did individual sequestered uh, voir dire, and jurors were averaging around 40 minutes. We did about 200 of them to get a jury of 12. So it can take a long time. And, you know, yeah, I have a, a, a concern that. Uh, we might go through hundreds of jurors just to find a qualified panel. In fact, there's an extra 400 prospective jurors on standby. So while 600 showed up today at a different off-site building, Ted, uh, if they go through all of these 600, they still need more. There are 400 more on standby to bring in to bring in October 25th or so if they need to do that. So these jurors, while there wasn't a motion to change venue, they feel both the prosecution, the defense, they can impanel a fair and impartial jury. It just may take a process, a while to do so to really weed out and to try to gauge if these prospective jurors can be fair and impartial. And the goal is a jury of 12 with four alternates. Yeah, and you have three defense teams that it's going to be um, in the mix, adding uh, that much more time to the process. What about the strategies from both sides? What are we expecting? Well, we're expecting, again, that video to be front and center for both prosecution and the defense here. This is a case that really comes down to the interpretation of the law here. So the defense has put forth a couple of affirmative defenses. That means the prosecution has to disprove citizen's arrest and self-defense beyond a reasonable doubt. So we expect both sides out of the gate in jury selection. Probably this case more than any, jury selection is so important for these jurors and these attorneys to be selected because of what they really have to grapple with once once the trial is underway. But we know the defense, we have three co-defendants here. So we have the McMichaels, Travis and Greg, but also William Ronnie Bryan. And it, like you said, that has another dynamic in that there's three defense teams that are going to be questioning witnesses and jurors and uh, showing evidence before this jury. But we also did, again, speak to the uh, defense attorneys of uh, Greg McMichael and talked about how the defense really is sort of this unified defense. Let's listen. I've noticed as far as the filings that you all represent, of course, Gregory McMichael and his son, Travis McMichael, is represented by other attorneys in a different city than we're sitting in right now. Uh, tell me about how that will look in trial. Will there be a unified strategy for two of these defendants versus William Roddy Bryan, who is also represented, of course, by another attorney? Well, yeah, there is a unified strategy. Um, we've worked closely with uh, Travis's lawyers. Um, they're friends of ours. We've worked with them before. They're very good lawyers. And so, yeah, we've developed a theory of the case that's consistent. Um, we'll take turns with witnesses so we're not repeating one another. Um, there's no reason we would go in a different direction. Uh, their defense and our defense are side by side. They coexist very smoothly. And, you know, so we're not sure about Roddy Bryan's approach or his lawyer's approach and what they'll do. We're not as, we're not working with 
him or them uh, as much. Um, obviously, they're aware of what we're doing and what our theory of the case is. Um, but the, the McMichaels, father and son, and the four lawyers representing them, we're all working very much in sync with one another. And Ted, that really does make sense for the McMichaels because the, the series of facts are pretty much the same. But for William Roddy Bryan, we know we've heard a lot from Kevin Golf, his defense attorney, over the last year and a half or so about what his defense may be. He's repeatedly said that Roddy, William Roddy Bryan, was someone who knew that tra uh, Greg McMichael was a law enforcement officer or a former one and that he simply was just a witness to this lawful instance of self-defense and has no criminal responsibility. So it will be interesting to see in these opening statements exactly what direction the Bryan defense goes in this case. Yeah, this is going to be fascinating. Uh, Kevin Goff, a unique individual, uh, and um, I'm sure we'll have a unique defense and presence in the courtroom to be sure. Chanley Painter, you're not going anywhere. You'll be around for the next few weeks, maybe months, actually, after listening to the predictions of jury selection. Uh, joining us now.